got a very rare chance uh, to visit the the uh, prison house that uh, Nelson Mandela stayed at when he was released from Victor Fester prison. And I think of a, a very rare opportunity that many people don't get. And we want to show you and share a little bit of this with you. Take a look. Between the Wineland towns of Paul and Franschhoek lies the Drakenstein Correctional Centre, which history will recall by its former name, the Victor Verstad Prison, from where Nelson Mandela walked out a free man after 27 years. Today I am super excited because I'm about to have a very unique experience. I'm going to be spending time in the actual cell where Tata Madiba spent the last stretch of his sentence, and I'm meeting up with Manfred who's going to be taking me through and telling me some very unique stories that he can remember from our Tata. Manfred, yeah. welcome. Nice Hardly to see welcome, you again. Then. Perfect. Thank you. Now, I'm, I I can't wait for this experience, but before we even get there, what's the story on the statue? Because I believe this it holds a very special meaning. Great, great symbolism. Let me tell you, first and foremost, this statue was paid for and commissioned by the Sohale Family Foundation. And Minister Sohale approached uh, Madiba, and Madiba said, fine, continue. One condition though, the plinth on which it stands. Don't make it too high, because I don't want to be elevated. That's why the plinth is not that high. The statue, however, three meter tall, you can see he's actually walking. He walks to freedom facing the rest of Africa. Around the plinth, you will find prison bars bended in different directions. That depicts his own, as well as our nation's attempt to break free from our past. Then you will find marble. The marble came from Robben Island. It is an indication of Madiba's strength and the strength of our nation. On the far edges of the marble, you find obviously the Bob Wire effect, prison and its systems. The sad part about the statue here is everything around the statue, the island forms one big teardrop the tears of our past. And inside this teardrop, you find a lot of stones or pebbles, all sizes, all colors. That's us as a nation. Even the cornerstones, white, black, white, black, a divided history. But they need to be a good part as well. So I want to take you to a different island, closer to our access gate, with a third flagpole, beautiful Rainbow Nation flag, to tell us this is what they achieved. And to plead with all of us, let there not be tears for the same reason. And at the bottom of that flagpole, you will find 27 stones to tell us how long it took him to achieve it. The little island of hope. I like Positive it. part. Positive part. Yeah. In December 1988, Madiba was placed in house arrest where he spent the final 18 months of his incarceration. It was in this regular three-bedroom home that he was reintroduced to the modern world. So this is where he used to sit on the second step watching four little ducks from a nearby farm often came here and they kept him company, you know, so he truly enjoyed those moments. But his idea of swimming actually was he sat in the pool, head under the water, blow some bubbles and that's it. But he tried learning. He tried learning. Let me tell you, one of my colleagues, um, Johan Hutter, one day brought a big surfboard and he actually tried to teach Madiba how to swim. But I can confidently tell you today, Madiba still can't swim. So he used <laughs> to sit there on the second step and just enjoy, yeah. you know, the ducks. Manfred, I must be honest that this is not exactly the prison cell that I had in mind. And I think a lot of people would be wondering why after spending 25 years in both Robben Island and also Polsmoor, was he transferred to such a nice facility? Yes, at the time, there was a lot of civic unrest in our country, sports isolation, overseas companies already imposed sanctions against South Africa. So government actually needed a place where they can create an atmosphere where they can start to talk with the ANC in Madiba in particular. But they need something to that need to be safe first and foremost and public can't hear just so this house already present property because this house was not built for him it was a farm owner's house before we took it over so it was ideal because when whenever government officials came here the officials and residents on the other side had no idea that Madiba was even detained here so this house was just a safe haven for them now you know as they said in Koza Wam Kele Kele welcome Wam Kele Kele thank you please do wow Manfred, wow, what a kitchen. Yeah, all the ori original furniture. Sure. When he came here, he was 25 and a half years already in prison. And obviously a lot of things changed in a period of 25 years before he went to prison. And during the 25 years, he had no but no knowledge about microwave ovens. Now believe it or not, a microwave oven used to stand here and opposite there, a Philips television in that corner. So the morning of the 10th of December, Madiba actually walked through this house and he said, oh, this house has two TVs, referring to the microwave. One official started to laugh, said, that's not a TV, it's a microwave. Madiba said, no, what's that? The official came, boiled some water, said, come feel it's hot. Madiba did not believe him, so what he did, he came and put his finger inside, actually burned himself. So it was his first ever encounter in this house with a microwave oven, something that we take for granted. Poor Madiba. And let me tell you, as while we're in front of this fireplace, 
He came here from Constantia Clinic at a time, very sick, TB and a few other problems. So initially he used to sit here, enjoy a nice heat of the, of the fireplace. About three weeks later, the prison commander came and said, stop this practice, you don't give this man out anymore. And he was very disappointed, what can he do, you know, sick. But fortunately for him, every second Monday, the doctor came to check up on him. And when the doctor came after this incident with the commander, he told the doctor, my health is important to your government. I need the heat, please make a plan. The doctor simply went, wrote out a prescription for hood, and gave it to the commander. The commander could not believe his eye, but the doctor's prescribing who this medication. And that's how we beat the system, you know. Don't, not forgetting he was actually a lawyer, so he knew how to maneuver. I can't believe that story, it's so interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> the first dinner guest at the house was Winnie Mandela. Madiba also used his time here to complete his LLB degree, and he was permitted visitors like anti-apartheid campaigner and friend Harry Schwarz. However, for the most part, he was still being kept away from his family and his life. So this is the big bedroom. I mean, wow, just look at it. So only three nights in this room, and he said, please give me something smaller. And then, you know, they relocate him to the smaller room. So the first night, he actually came through that sliding door. And three nights later, well, off he goes. I can just imagine what must have gone through his mind just stepping into a room this size. I mean, look, just consider Robin Island, Paulsville, tiny little cell, and suddenly they brought him in here. Oh, I can really... I personally think he did not sleep that three nights at all. It must have been scary, really. Mental punishment, in a sense. Indeed. Yeah. During his stay, Madiba also had the care of a cook. After the harshness of Robin Island, he really enjoyed the garden. The overseas media referred to this house as a gilded cage. Ah, oh, let me tell you, I forgot to tell you, the last story perhaps is this lemon tree, this very lemon tree, was planted by Madiba himself. No way. And it's just an look here, 23 years later. Oh, that's incredible. Do you mind if I take a lemon home with oh, me? Please maybe? do, please do. Many people take some of the fruit, so please do. Really? Yeah. Grow my own little Madiba lemon tree. Here, how about this one here? Yeah. Oh. Oh. But look at that. Manfred, thank you so much for taking me through the house, telling me all these stories, and now I can really gain a better understanding as to who Tata Madiba really is, the person. Definitely. You know, the one thing I can perhaps tell you, Madiba never claimed anything for himself, never tried to be a saint either. He's just simply there, you know, this great guy who said, you know, there should be, this country should belong to everybody and say in the wealth of this country. Take care. The house has been declared a South African National Heritage Site. It is being preserved exactly as it was during Madiba's stay and is open to the public strictly by appointment.